Um, I'm a new Image staff member, and also I'm a youth counselor for Addison Behavioral Care. Uh, basically, I work with the youth. Um, I do a bit of in-school prevention, um, not at this time, uh, but mainly I do a uh, after-school program. Um, it's ran at the Kelly Elementary School. Um, and they're uh, basically, you know, we facilitate the kids. Mainly, my main focal point is helping them with their homework. Homework assistance is uh, is vital to me. Um, sometimes they don't like it because, you know, I'm always like, no, you have to finish your work first, and then they get to play. And you know, the more quicker their friends get done, and the less, you know, the more discouraged they are, and they want to cheat and quicken up, or you know, and then all of a sudden something is wrong for the third time in a row, and they can't concentrate because they're watching all their friends play, and you know. And, but um, it, it teaches kids a, a good uh, consistency of discipline. So um, it always works out in the end anyway. Yeah, I mean, the after-school program is important. The rites of passage program are, uh, is, is equally vitally as important. Um, mainly because the children, when they go home, often their parents aren't there. So there's really uh, no guardian or no one enforcing them to uh, get their homework done. You know, they're pretty much in front of the TV. Um, it's few and far in between kids actually going home when their parents aren't there, uh, making sure they're doing their academic studies. So the parents make sure that they're here. Often the parents get home or at least get off of, um, of work around 5 o'clock, 5.30. Um, even for our after-school program, uh, there's certain uh, parents that, you know, don't come get their uh, children until around maybe 4.30. And the program's over at 4.00. You know, so uh, what we do is very vital. Um, we're teaching them uh, positive um, work habits. You know, it's very important to make sure, you know, you have everything uh, pretty much finished before you, you know, play and have fun. Um, rites of passage, for me personally, um, that's a bit more of a, where my heart is in, in terms of the program. Um, <clears throat> men are... Uh, basically very vital and men are missing in the community um, there's a lot of things for women to do uh, to express themselves to develop themselves you know especially in the arts um, but in terms of the men uh, because the fathers aren't there a lot of women you know raise their daughters but they just pretty much love their sons you know and well men they need raise too you know but women can't raise men only men can do that and so what the Rites of Passage program does is for at least one year, they are surrounded by men, you know, uh, who are affirming their masculinity, um, something women can't do. Uh, this is very important. Um, this helps to make sure that the men have a firm identity in who they are. Uh, some of them may be insecure because they have never seen uh, men, a man shave. Uh, I remember there was a story where a guy said, uh, yeah, when I was a kid, um, I used to watch my mom get her hair done a lot, you know, but I never seen anyone shave, you know, and it's, it's those little things like that, that, you know, pretty much, uh, is part of male grooming, male development. I mean, you, you really be surprised. Um, but yes, the, uh, rites of passage program is, is very important in terms of uh, male development. I could say that, uh, you know, I have uh, some, some good stories, uh, I guess, in terms for me, because personally, uh, as a man, it, it's one thing to, you know, have responsibilities and things, but it's a whole other thing to teach it. Um, yeah, it just, it's, it's, an, it's a whole other thing. Um, the lessons for me, as I was teaching the lessons, I was learning them myself because I've never been through a rites of passage, uh, maybe through, you know, your own personal life, trials and struggles. You know, we've all had our own rites of passage and our own demons to fight and conquer. But I use those experiences and the needs of the kids and what they need to basically fuel whatever I teach. Um, I could definitely say that there are two, maybe three kids in there who, you know, I really do have uh, high hopes for. Um, I've watched them grow, um, especially during the trip. Even some of them started to see the connections between, um, you know, the cities in the south and the cities here. Um, the kid that was assigned to me, Khalil, he ended up saying, you know, Mr. Matt, we're in Jackson, Mississippi, but it looks just like Wilkinsburg. I feel like I'm still in Wilkinsburg. And I said, well, 
well, yeah, you know, if you really notice that, you know, this community is our community too, you know, and a lot of the same problems that, you know, hover over Wilkinsburg hover over here as well. You know, this is just not a community problem. So even then, you know, I'm still watching how they, you know, connect, you know, other environments that they've never even been in before, you know, to uh, places back at home. So it's always like they're seeing the big picture. You see the light go on. Yeah. It's one thing to like, you know, read about civil rights and, you know, hugging Megger Evers' wife, you know what I mean? Just, just seeing Jesse Jackson and being in the, the hotel that, that Martin Luther King was actually, you know, in before he, you know, he got assassinated. It changes your relationship with civil rights. I mean, it's no longer just a book, you know what I mean? But it's never been a book. Walking across, a, you know, the, the Edmund Pettus Bridge, if I had said that right. Um, yeah, I got chills. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's an experience. I mean, you're pretty much connected to the, those people. I mean, I've, I've picked up cotton. You know, I've seen pictures of, of, of slaves picking cotton. You know, pictures you probably won't find online. And, you know, you just kind of stare. And you know, I've held shackles, you know, and it's, it's, it's just as silent as, it's like I said, it's an experience. It's like, what do you say to that? You know, you, you hear about slaves and things like that, but then you, you pick up the shackles that they were in and you know you you empathize with it you know it, it does something to you you know i could see why uh even though uh jews hold on to the holocaust not because oh such a tragic event and they can't let go of their bitterness no it's it's something deeper than that you know and it's something that they simply do not want to forget or erase out of their history and even in African culture, they said, if you would forget about your ancestors, that is the only true way they would die. So I think like through all cultures, you know, there's something about uh, not letting go of the past, you know, not forgetting what had happened, you know, not because, you know, oh, I'm bitter. No, it's because this is part of my legacy and it helps to have a certain, gives you a certain privilege of reading versus back then you get 20 lashes if you were caught reading. You know, and I can go on and on about all these other things that we should definitely have privileges for. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's revolutionized everything I thought about civil rights and I still have a lot to learn. You know, I think there is no like systematic way in getting involved. I think if people know about these, these places, Addison Behavioral Care or anything, I personally think that, you know, that, I mean, they have the internet, they can look up, okay, well, what is Addison Behavioral Care? Hmm, oh, they do X, Y, and Z? Oh, well, maybe there's more, you know? And I think we're just raised in a society where we're waiting for someone to advertise to us because that's what the TV does all the time. You know, you look at this commercial and, oh, now I see it, now I'm going to go. And we're not taught to be critical thinkers. We're not taught to be active, you know, we're taught to be passive until something, you know, waves a sail and is coming to save us. You know, we have to, I think we have to get sick and tired of where we're at to the point where we go looking for a solution, you know, and, and not being so afraid. You know, it's kind of like that proverb and um, it was written in Chinese. I think it went something like, um, and then there was a day where the flower was no longer afraid to bloom. And I think that's what we got to get to. You know, we have to get just not being afraid to, uh, you know, seek out, you know, instead of just um, just sitting there waiting for someone to help us with our problems. If there's something that we want to know, we should seek it out. You know, people have not because they ask not.